Hey guys, I'm Nick, aka the one and only Nick's Games, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can start a Minecraft 1.8 server with plugins. Yeah, you heard me right, a 1.8 server with plugins. However, there isn't a ton of plugins for 1.8 yet, only about 40, and this doesn't use Bucket or anything like that. Sadly, none of those plugins work. However, you can use the 40 that are existed, and the software is called Rainbow. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump on into this. This is a 1.8 server. You can use all the 1.8 blocks. Everything in 1.8 works in this server build, so it's pretty cool. Also, I do want to mention that this isn't a 24-hour server. If you want a 24-hour server, you can go to rkt.us slash apex, where you can buy a 24-hour server that can run this Rainbow Minecraft servers with just seven dollars a month or sixty dollars a year so um that's how that works yeah anyway guys let's go ahead and jump on into this, this is a locally hosted server that uh, only you and your close friends will be able to join anyway First off, we want to go to the first thing in the description down below. It'll take you to this page, uh, projectrainbow.org. I'm not going to read all that. That's super long. It's the first thing in the description, people. Go down there, click that. Then we want to click on the newest version. In my case, that's version 45. For you, it might be version 55. It might be version 46. It might be version 100. What is at the very, very top right here? Click on it. It will then open up a page right like this and then right under the where it says the version number that you had for example in this case version 45 for you it might be version 103 but whatever version number you have go there click rainbow underscore v45.2 or v whatever your version is click that it will then go through and download right over here now it might say we don't know what this file is are you sure you want to keep it if it says that, okay, yes, you want to keep it. Right here it is. The rainbow V42 is not commonly, click that arrow, keep. Okay, you want to keep the file. It is trusted, I promise. Go ahead, minimize this, and boom, here we go. A rainbow version of file on our desktop. If it's not on your desktop, but the Windows key and our keyboard in R at the exact same time. Type in downloads, hit enter, and it will be right here. Click it, drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Now, we don't need WinRAR for this tutorial. What we do need to do, however, is right click on this, and we need to extract files or unzip files. Whichever one it is for you, click it. It will then go through the process, click OK, click Yes, click do what it tells you to do, agree to it all, and boom, there you go. Here we go, we have a folder. We can delete what we downloaded now, because all we need is this folder. We also need to go ahead and create a new folder here on our desktop. I'm going to name this Rainbow Tut Server, for Rainbow Tutorial Server. Click Enter, and now we can open up this folder and put it right next to the folder that we extracted right here so open up this folder now we need to take some things from over here and bring them over to here and we just need to bring and we don't need to bring other things does that make sense i hope so what we need to bring is these bottom three things so these bottom three things right here click those and drag them over we can close out of this and we can actually delete this now because we don't need it anymore we just need to focus on this so now what we need to do is right click on underscore run it and then click edit so right click on it edit it will run we want to do that it I don't know why I did that because it's just notepad it's just weird but you want to run it and uh, once you've opened this up okay right here is what we need to focus on XMX 400 M this is how much RAM you are going to be dedicating to your server 400 M is four gigabytes of ram most people don't have four gigabytes of ram or they have just that amount so if that is what you're looking at here if you have four gigabytes of ram there's no way you can run a four gigabyte server so we need to lower that i'm going to lower it to two i wouldn't recommend going lower than 1500 or 1 1.5 gigabytes meaning you need at least three gigabytes of ram in your pc to run a rainbow server if you don't have that, I'm sorry, you can't run a rainbow server. There's nothing I can do. It takes a lot of RAM to run this server because it is very early on software and they've not performance optimized it quite yet. We're going to, however, do 2000 for this video right there. So we can go ahead and click File and save it just to make sure that goes through i also want to focus on this right here where it says program files java re jre7 bin.exe.java whatever that let's look at that real quick 
you can try to run the server right now, which we'll get to in a minute. If that works, this doesn't apply to you. However, I would recommend checking it just in case. So what we need to do is click the Windows key on our keyboard and then go to Computer. Right? So right here we are. You will have this C, local C disk. Double click on that. And then we want to go into Program Files. We then want to scroll down and see if we see Java. Right there it is. Java. Double click it. JRE7. Double click that. There should be files like that. If you have JRE7 in Program Files, you have to change nothing. You're good. Stop listening for a second. If you don't, it is most likely located right here in Program 86 files. As you can see, I don't have Java there. If Java, however, is in Program 86, you want to come here to where it says Program Space Files and then add space parentheses x86 parentheses, right? It should match what it says right here. Now you're good to go. So there is that. However, we don't need that in this case because Java is located in just Program Files. File, save, close out of this, close out of this, and uh, it's time to double click on Rainbow. So we double click on Rainbow. It's going to download some things. Here is EULA. Double click on EULA. We need to agree that this will be true, assuming this server is not going to break this end user license agreement. Mine's not. So file, save, close out of that. And we need to double click on Rainbow once again. Once we do that, it will download some more stuff, but now we're done. Look at that. That's pretty easy. Now we want to right click on the taskbar and start task manager. We want to click processes. And as you can see, there are a few Java W's here. See Java W, Java W. We want to right click on those and in process for both of them, right? We just started the server. We don't want the server to be running right now. And so we're going to close out of those. Once you've done that, now we can technically run the server offline. So if you double click on this and click, I'm always want to run this. So I'm going to uncheck this box and click run. It will now go ahead and go through everything. As you can see, preparing spawn, going through all of that stuff, generating spawn area. Boom, done. It's successful. Okay, if it says done for help, type help, then you successfully ran the server. However, Nobody can join it except you right now, and uh, that's kind of pointless, isn't it? So let's go ahead and type STOP right here. It will close out of that, shut down the server, and uh, eventually this will close out of also. However, if we want other people to join, we need the Windows key on our keyboard and R at the exact same time, and then type CMD. Hit enter, it will open up this, a black box that's exactly like that. However, we don't need that one anymore. What we want to type in this black box that we just opened, however, is IP. C-O-N-F-I-G. IP config. All one word. Hit enter. And boom. It gives us some general information here. This information is what we're going to enter into server properties right here. Right? So you see this is a properties file. We can right click on it. We can open it with notepad. Double click on that. And boom. Here we go. What we want to change in here, which there's a lot of useful stuff in here, but I'm only going to get people to join your server right now. I'm not going to talk about anything else. What we want to do right here is find server IP, which is located right here. And in next to server IP, we want to type your IPv4 address, which is located right here. So what we want to do is type, in my case, 192.168.1.8. Yours is probably different from that. Yours might be 192.168.1.9. It might be completely different numbers at the beginning. But I promise, I promise, whatever your IPv4 address is here just needs to go right here in server IP. It's probably not going to be the same as mine, but whatever it is right here, just copy it over right here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click File, Save, and close out of this notepad document. Now we need to port forward. Yes, this is a port forwarding tutorial, but don't freak out. I've literally helped hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people port forward. It's pretty, pretty easy. I'm a pro at this, guys. Come on. So what we want to do is open up our browser. This is Rainbow, but we don't need this anymore. What we do need is a blank tab. In this blank tab, up here in the search bar where you would normally type like YouTube.com, we want to type our default gateway, which can be found, again, where we typed ipconfig in the command prompt. See, as you can see, default gateway, 
Ours is 192.168.1.1. Yours might be different. It probably will be, but don't worry. Whatever it is right here, type it into this. 192.168.1.1. Now, mine immediately pops up this login box. If yours doesn't, don't freak out. No reason to freak out. It's going to have some kind of login menu though, right? It might not be exactly like this because you probably have a different router than me. However, it's going to be similar to this. It's going to have a username and a password, a, you know, user password, user pass, something like that. It's going to be a login menu of some sort, whether it's like this or whether it's an actual page that actually opens up. Nevertheless, once you've got this, what is the username and password? If you know it, go ahead and enter it in, but I'm guessing you probably don't. So, let's go over here to router passwords, portforward.com slash default underscore username underscore password or the second link in the description down below. Go down there, click that, it will take you off to this page where you'll be able to see all by the way, of pretty much every kind of router in existence today. If your router isn't here, call your uh, internet service provider and they'll be able to provide your username and password for you most likely. However, I can go ahead and click Netgear and then go down to, you know, any of my Netgear models. I have a W. NR3700, WNDR3700, and as you can see, my username is admin and my password is password. You can do whatever you want with that, but, uh, but yeah, I've changed mine actually. It's not admin and password, it's admin and then my custom password, but for you, it's probably admin and password, password and password, admin and then blank, nothing. You don't put anything in the password slot. But uh, go on this page, find the kind of router you have, and then find the model, and right here it will be. I promise. It's There's tons, literally thousands of routers on this website with their admin and password. Nevertheless, once you've done that, log into your router, and you'll get something that looks similar or completely different from what I have right here. But don't worry about that either. We're still looking for the same thing, whether yours looks the same as mine or different from mine. Go into advanced, that's probably a safe bet, and now what you're looking for is something called apps and gaming, called port forwarding, port forwarding slash port triggering, look for port forwarding or apps and gaming. In my case, I don't even see it right here, I have to go into advanced setup again and then go into port forwarding to find this, but right there it is, port forwarding slash port triggering, awesome. Click that, it takes me here where we want to select the type of service as port forwarding and then we want to add a custom service down at the bottom for you it might not be add custom service it might say add it might do you know add a port forward add a forward add something add a port whatever it is click add you know whatever that is so I'm gonna click add a custom service it gives me a menu like this for service name you can name it literally whatever you want in my case I'm gonna name it Minecraft for service type, it needs to be TCP slash UDP. If you only have one option, these options separately, you don't have them together, you need to do this twice. Once for TCP and once for UDP. Everything else remains the same. Just pick one the first time and the other the second time. In my case, I have both and you probably will too. So go ahead and pick TCP slash UDP. For external starting port, we want 25565. For external ending port, we want 25565 also. And for our internal IP address, well, that comes back to our IPv4 address that is located right here. 192.168.1.8. Once you've got all of that set up, click apply, and the hard part is over with. Now, we can run your server, and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and minimize this. Guess what? We don't even need this anymore, which isn't that awesome. We can open up our folder and then double click on run it or underscore run it. And it goes through. Boom, 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 boom. Creating. Done. Awesome. Now we can go ahead, open up Minecraft 1.8, and we will be able to play this. I'm also going to go ahead and opt myself, and you can just type OP, and then whatever your username is. In my case, that's Nick's Games over here in this, uh, in this CMD, this command prompt unit and boom opt nips games awesome so i'm gonna go ahead as you can see minecraft 1.8 click play it's gonna open up minecraft 1.8 and we'll be able to join this server in a few different ways so right there is minecraft 1.8 again just proving you guys this is 1.8 a lot of people are like you can't have plugins in 1.8 well here you go guys this is a server with plugins in 1.8 anyway go ahead and click multiplayer there's a few ways that we can get to this we can direct connect using local 
Host, this may or may not work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It didn't that time. No reason to freak out. What we can join with is that IPv4 address we had earlier. Remember what that was? 192.168.1.8. Join server. Go through that. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. And as you can see over there, Nick's Games join the server. Boom, we are in 1.8, and uh, it's awesome. So I can actually game mode out. I'm just proving to you guys this is a 1.8 server. There's diorite and plays down the diorite. 1.8, people. Okay, so there is that. What if your friends want to join, however? They don't join using your IPv4 address found right here. They're going to be using your public IP address. And to get that, just simply go to Google, google.com, and type two letters, I for the letter I, and P for the letter P. Click enter, and it, boom, right here, your public IP address is. Mine is a black box except for one number. Um, the reason I leave that one number out is so you guys can know the number stays the same, and I don't change it across anything. You can't really do anything with one number. But nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and then paste it right over here into my server address right here. Paste that there. Now, if I click join server, it will join the server, and my friends will be able to join the server, see, same server, using that IP address as well. That public IP address that was found on Google right there, give that to your friends. They will enter it right here into direct connect or into add server in the server address. They will enter it right there, and they will be able to join your server. Boom. And guess what? You now have a rainbow server running Minecraft 1.8 that your friends can join. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I love making these videos for you guys. Rainbow is amazing. It could be the future of servers. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. There's a video coming up tomorrow on how to install plugins in Rainbow. So I hope you look forward to that. I'm Nix Games, and I am out, guys. Peace. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I make awesome Minecraft tutorials every single day of the week. And here's some videos you guys probably want to go check out. On the left is how to install Optifine in Minecraft 1.8. Yes, Optifine has updated in Minecraft 1.8, and that video shows you exactly how to install the mod. And on the right is Nick's Craft Episode 4. That is my weekly vanilla Minecraft Let's Play series. And that episode, I built an epic farm and uh, built some waterfalls. Pretty cool. Go check it out. Also, check out the video on the bottom so you can see how you can grow on YouTube. There's a bunch of videos there that'll help you do just that. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out and uh, if you enjoyed it it probably worked for you so you know it's kind of a trade right anyway guys I'm Nick's Games and I'm out peace